Hello, and welcome to this Dawn Buster's Taste Challenge. <coughs> the light is slowly coming, coming out here at 6.03 a.m. Standard time, Central Standard Time. Yeah, it's supposed to be actually daylight at 6.03 in November in real time. Okay, anyway, got a beer review getting posted after this. But uh, we have very old Barton, which is not actually very old. It's only four years old. The brand was introduced in 1964. 53 years old is not very old. Oh, well, it's just a brand name. From Sazerac, Barton 1792 Distillery, Bardstown, Kentucky. These are both 80 proof. And... Uh, Let's see here. Versus Jethro T. Boots. Introduced in 2014. Also 80 proof. Like I said, um, it's a sour mash uh, formula. The very old Barton doesn't claim that. This has no age statement. Produced by Legacy Distilling, Louisville, Kentucky. Okay, there is a, a Sazerac facility in Louisville. Um, <clears throat> there's also um, a bourbon produced for Albertsons and Safeway stores coming from Louisville called uh, 75 South because of, I think, the distillery is located along Interstate 75 southbound. Okay, Jethro T. Boots, some guy who know what nobody heard of, but he did exist. Jethro Titus Boots died 1921. Okay. You notice the bottle's the same design as the uh, ancient age, kind of that old Jack Daniels mimic bottle. Bottle. Jethro T. Boots, Kentucky's finest. Uh you really think this is the finest bourbon to come from Kentucky? I'm not too sure about that. It's got a strange texture on the label. It's like gritty. It's like sandpaper. That's what it is. It's like a very fine grain sandpaper texture. Very old Barton is smooth, but you can feel the letters. Bottled by Barton Distilling. Bardstown and Owensboro, Kentucky. So Sazerac, they do have facilities all around and not just in Kentucky either. <clears throat> so how long is Jethro T. Boots aged? I don't know. At least four years because there's no age statement. So if, if a bourbon or any whiskey, I should add, if any whiskey has no age statement, it has to be at least four years aged in the wooden barrels oak barrels if it's bourbon if uh, if it's less than 48 months four years then they must give an age statement they're not required to give an age statement above four years if they have any flavorings or colorings added it must be disclosed now if it's a bourbon it cannot have flavorings or color colors and still be considered a bourbon okay they're both golden Yellow wouldn't have been able to do this taste challenge yesterday. I was so sick, sick for basically a day, no, uh, maybe 20 hours, Eight, 18 to 20 hours. I've drinking that some of that rancid Veltenberger Kloster Barock. Dunkle. Yeah. We complain about dates and people say, ah, oh, you worry too much about dates. This stuff was obviously years and years old. It was spoiled. Doorknacks, they're bad about checking dates, but most stores aren't going to sit there and just check all the dates. Some do, like Matherns will pull them. It starts getting short dated and they catch it, they'll pull it and put it in a discount basket. That was a bad experience. Very bad. Unpleasant. So if something smells rotten, 
rotten, don't drink it. Good lesson, right? And my experience with aging beers has not been positive. Even the high ABV beers. No, they didn't make me sick. Those, they just didn't taste good. They just tasted old. Now, some of these super high, you know, 10, 12, 13, 14% beers are supposed to get better with age, people say. I haven't noticed that. They taste stale from what I can tell. Now, this thing I drank yesterday, two, two days ago, didn't just taste stale. It smelled and tastes like turned fruit prunes that had gone bad. Now, I mean, you know, why would I sip it? Okay. All right. Smells like sweet candy, like whiskey here with some char, you know, wood, sort of the typical thing. I guess the, I mean, do a little more mixing. I think it will feel pretty much the same. Now, this is coming from the same company, just like the Ancient Age in Barry Old Barton. But that, that was a big difference. The Ancient Age had a much um, more pronounced flavor. Okay, so sweet char, wood, oak, dried flowers. It's foggy. Foggy. Same thing over here, but maybe a little more um, of some uh, candied fruit in there. Hmm. Now, one sour mash and one is not. I don't know why the, the Vario Barton does not use a sour mash process, but they don't. Or they don't disclose it. This one here. As they're starting to breathe, this one is starting to have some peppercorn notes. Peppercorn. John and Neely, good morning, Ron. I'm not too big into aging beer. I can tell you right now, I'm, I'm not going to do it anymore. I have not had any luck with aged beer so far. The ones I try to taste is stale, yeah. Now, of course, the rule is you got to age the high-gravity beers. But I haven't had much success. Really, no success if you watch the videos. Okay, so this one has that a little bit of that peppercorn. Huh, strange. Let's see. I think this must be the Jethro T. Boots. But I haven't tasted it, so don't call me on that. Don't hold me to it. Well, it's peppery, though. Ooh, we. Hmm. I think the next taste challenge I'll do whenever that might be. I think I'll do that benchmark versus uh, very old Barton. And my feeling is that the benchmark will beat it, but we'll see. <sighs> this one has a lot of wood. It's woody. Char, got a burn in my throat. I don't know this. Uh, 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 these are pretty close. Uh, uh, so work on this a little bit. Let's see. That one's got a little twang to it. Uh, well, I guess. I guess this is sort of a tie. <laughs> 
if you have your CVS card, you can get Jethro T. Boots for $8.99 per bottle. And I guess the very old Barton is about $9.99 per bottle. So you're talking about virtually the same price or with sales and whatnot, they might be equal. So they're coming from the same company. Ah, well, if you want to discount brand bourbon, I guess you'd be be say it'd be safe to go with either one of these you're not going to get anything extraordinary nothing nasty about them but why would you pay eight to ten dollars and expect anything extraordinary it wouldn't even make any sense so just a basic product for basic usage purposes they should be fine uh which is which hmm Starting to, it's starting to have more wood in it. And I don't recall the very old Barton having a lot of woodiness. Weird. It's weird. It's weird. I still think this is very old Barton. I just might be picking up things I didn't pick up the first three times. So I'm going to say very old Barton, but really it's a wash, right? No winner. Just basic stuff. Even though it's aged four years, the, the aging hasn't seemed to make a whole lot of difference with these challenges, has it? three-year age or four-year age or even two-year age when it came to the uh, beam eight, Beams 8-star. Eight Didn't seem to matter much. I mean, the Beams 8-star was two years, a minimum of two years, they said, so it could have been older. <laughs> but that seemed to have more characters, as much character as this stuff. I don't know. Let's see. So I'm saying uh, uh, um, I'm saying this is very old Barton. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Jethro T. Boots. Now, I was remarking about the woodiness, right? And didn't I say that uh, maybe the very old Barton is displaying characteristics I hadn't picked up before, the woodiness? Okay, well, <clears throat> maybe I wasn't on my toes enough or thinking through this enough because... Remember now, with the first samplings, I was talking about how it didn't really have much woody character or char. And now here, this one, I said, had a lot of wood, but I called it very old Barton, against my better judgment, perhaps. But it is the boots. So that this is something, even though I'm incorrect, but this is something we're picking up with the very old Barton. It does not have a lot of woody character. It is a bourbon in the technical sense, in the legal sense. But it doesn't really have it doesn't really have many of the traits that people might expect with a bourbon. I don't know. It's a mystery. But anyway, people in Kentucky like it because it sells like crazy up there. I guess they like that mild character. Kind of nondescript character, but then you could get that with a blended whiskey like, like I said, the Beams 8 Star or the, or one of those other ones I have. Can't remember which ones. I have a lot that I haven't opened yet. That's why it's confusing me a little bit. Um, oh, yeah, the, the Seagram 7 crown. Those things. Um, but, yeah, I don't see where this has any more kind of character than those. It's fine. It's just kind of like run of the mill, just ordinary old stuff. The Jethro T. Boots has a little more character, as you noticed, <laughs> and it's a, a, a private label. <laughs> Sometimes these private label brands are not too bad. I think the benchmark would probably beat both of these. Yeah, I'll go along with that. As you can see, I had trouble with these two. These are kind of like the bottom of the barrel type thing, right? I mean, you don't get much lower than this. 
I think if you go lower in quality than this, you wouldn't be able to drink it. Uh, not that these are bad, but it would it would reach that tipping point where they would just be awful. But they probably don't even have any bourbons that are lower than this in price and quality because they just wouldn't meet the standard of a bourbon. So then they're just going to make blended whiskey. You know what I mean? So, I mean, this is as cheap as it's going to go. As cheap as it's going to go. All those Sazerac budget brands of bourbon, and then this McAfee, I mean, this uh, Jethro T. Boots. Now, benchmark is low. It's right there with them. It's pretty low. It used to be Seagram's benchmark. Remember, I told you in the 1960s. I want to look up real fast the Sazerac. Let's see, www.sazerac. Their website is like a little uh, bar room. So you, um, it says welcome, and then you walk in the bar room. You hear the horse clopping on the street. So then you, uh, when you're in the bar room, you click on different, you just hover on different parts of the bar room, and it gives you different styles of products. Now, this product portfolio is going to give you the good and the, I don't want to say bad, but it's giving you Barton 1792. That's obviously not a budget bourbon. Then the 99 brand, that is a budget bourbon. They even make a straight bourbon with the 99 brand, but most of it's flavored stuff like apple, cherry. Like you might see that 99. Usually they sell them in the little tiny bottles. People just drink like two shots. But let's see, Bentley's bourbon. That's a cheap brand, Bentley's. Never seen it in my life. Big House bourbon. What the deuce is Big House? <laughs> 90 proof. Okay. Doesn't really look like a cheap one, though. Sounds like it. Big House. I works in the Big House. I don't know how they could uh, sell that anymore. People would say that's offensive. Blanton's. Well, obviously, that's a very expensive bourbon. And then Bowman's, Buckhorn, Buffalo Trace. But they have some uh, inexpensive ones like Colonel Lee. Colonel Lee bourbon. Uh, Flatboat. Is that, isn't that like a budget brand, Flatboat? I don't know. I don't know much about these. Well, we know they got Kentucky Gentleman, Kentucky Tavern. I know that's cheap. I bought some. Rock Hill Farm, single barrel. No, I know that ain't cheap. You know what's weird, though? Oh, and they got 10 High. That's another cheap one. Tom Moore. I saw that at door next. Tom Moore. And they only sell that in the big plastic bottle. Hey, you know what? I'll buy liquor from Dorgmax, but I won't be buying any more wine or beer for those people. Two stars bourbon. Yeah, that's a cheap one. It's in an old Weller bottle. Van Winkle? No. <laughs> Virginia Gentleman. Oh, yeah, that's a cheapo. Huh. Zachariah Harris. Yeah, that's like a some made up name they're trying to make it sound like you know Ezekiah or whatever that's a cheap one I saw Zachariah Harris around kind of here and there Buffalo Trace let's see uh, Southern Comfort now what is this This must be a mistake on their website. I know Southern Comfort is not a bourbon. <laughs> That's a liqueur. That's a spirit whiskey. It's only made with like 15% straight whiskey. Y'all made a mistake, Sazerac. This should be listed under your uh, cordials, liquor, liqueurs, and specialties, right?
And then they got Zach. Yeah, I don't know. That's a screw up. Praline. I've seen that Praline. Praline. That's a uh, liqueur. But they got a lot of liqueurs from uh, Sazerac. They must have more liqueurs than anything. Alborg. Antica. Baja. Benchmark. Benchmark cordials. Okay. There's a lot of branded cordials from these bourbon brands. Diamore. I'm sure you've all heard of Diamore. Francesca. Herb Saint. La Belle, La Gendre, Margaritaville, who hadn't heard of Margaritaville? Noyens, Old Poltini, Peychaud's, et cetera, et cetera. Topaz, Tortilla, all right. <clears throat> oh, that Blanton's is a gem. No joke, I tried some of that stuff. Good stuff, but it did have a lot of Buffalo Trace characteristics, kind of like a, it's kind of like a jacked up Buffalo Trace in quality. Wow, sounds like there are quite a few cheap ones, many of which I've never even heard of. Yeah, a whole lot of cheap ones, and uh, there's probably a whole bunch more that they don't list on the website. You know, it's probably like the 30 that I listed and then 30 others they don't bother listing. Yeah, Southern Comfort is definitely not a straight whiskey, and it sure ain't a bourbon, so I don't know where... <laughs> where they got the idea to list it there it's a liqueur uh it tells you right on the thing on the lab on the bottle a liqueur i don't know hey you know what these companies make so many mistakes on their website i even told them they had the brand the year wrong for uh ancient age it's obviously wrong it's 1936 not 46 but they never changed it that i they might have changed it by now but i don't think they changed budweiser did and as a bush did fix their website when I showed them a mistake because they were saying that Bud Ice came out in 1984 and I contacted them I said it wasn't 84 it was 94 oh no we know what we're talking about oh they said we'll check and then the lady wrote me back you were right it was a mistake and so they changed it it's a true story tortilla is that a whiskey no that's one of those liqueurs yeah, if you look on the www.sazrac.com website, the liqueur list is so long. You could basically do a video channel and just do liqueurs, and it would you would never run out. And you could just do Sazerac, because each of the liqueur brands, it might be 10 within the brand. You know what I'm saying? Like Margaritaville, you click on that, and then there's this whole array. And they might even have its own website brand for... Uh, Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville, and I see that stuff everywhere, okay? Just like I see that 99 everywhere, that 99 brand, everybody sells that stuff. Now, it's probably bad. I say it's bad, but sold everywhere. Somebody likes it. Oh, well, anyway, this was a wash. No winners, no losers. Would I buy either one of these? Um... Well, I couldn't buy very old Barton anyway, since it's not sold in Louisiana. I probably would not, just because, first of all, it's going to take me my whole life to try all the brands, so practically I never would. Oh, but let's say I was giving somebody a gift. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't buy him Jethro T. Boots. I'd get him something like... Um, you know, Evan Williams bottle and bond or something nice like that, you know, or whatever, whatever, you know, something like that or a bullet or something. I don't know what I would buy, but I wouldn't get a store brand. <laughs> Leba Mori says, hello, everyone. Hello there. All right. Well, that's it. Enough jibber jabber. We've done it. The differences here were minimal. The quality for both was not exactly, uh, Fabulous. Um, your Jack Daniels, your Evan Williams has more flavor. Jack Daniels is a little harsher, but uh, still in all, it does have some quality flavors, etc. So it's got some, a lot going for it. But like everybody keeps saying, I think we've kind of narrowed it down to one thing we've discovered. 
that the Evan Williams is a great value because we're going round and round and round and it just keeps winning, you know? So you're paying 12 to $14 a bottle and it's really holding its own against everybody coming up against it. So, uh, hey, 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 hey. That's that's where you might want to you might want to stick with Evan Williams. I think that's what I would stick with at, 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 so far. In my experience with bourbon, which you can tell is minimal, but I think at this point I would go with the Evan Williams if I was just buying stuff. Right. OK, but we got a long way to go. This is just the beginning. Like really the very beginning like the first minute of the hour. All right, thanks folks for watching this video production and get ready because I'm gonna post a video review for beer.